What is up, guys? I'm Daddy Gamer Friend. Welcome back to a emergency meeting. I want to say of Xbox Business, where we here looking for a live podcast on their video channel. I don't see it up yet, but basically the gist is that um they have a podcast where they're gonna basically talk about them going like third party and stuff like that. We are gonna react to it. Excuse that I don't have the uh, the normal reaction uh setup here. But I am just skimming around, seeing if other creators have found it. And once we are, once we got it, we got it. And then we're going to go live. It should be up. It's nine o'clock my time. Videos. There it is. It's up. Uh, let's bring that in. I hear Hello sound. Welcome to the official Xbox podcast. I'm your host, Tina Amini, and we have a very hey, special Tina. episode today. As you can probably tell, let's crank by the it fact up that I'm joined 4K. by Bill, Sarah, and Matt. Welcome. Wow, well, let's talk go. About some updates at Xbox. We want to talk about game exclusivity. Ooh. We want to talk about Activision Blizzard now that they're okay. part of the portfolio. How that they might going right into it. Class. Let's go. And we want to talk about let's go. Let's go. Let's go. How all of this fits into the strategy at Xbox. Sure. So where should let we me start? Get, let me get the well. When we originally had planned for the mm -hmm. show, starting what, back in December, um, I think we probably would have started with Activision Blizzard, maybe talked a little bit about the exclusivity with some of the news coming up. And yep, 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 yep. But we've, we've had some unforeseen news that has come out. So let's just go and, and tackle the exclusivity question. Yep, I know yep, yep, yep. Let's, go. let's talk about it right now. Right now. Let us know. So we made Let a decision know, that we're going to take four games to the other consoles. Um, oh, just four games. Just four games. Okay. To our kind of fundamental exclusive strategy. Okay. Uh, it is. We're making these decisions for some specific reasons. Um, we for make some, every no, decision. They really want to make with some the money. Long -term health of Xbox <laughs> in mind. Um, and long-term health of Xbox means a growing platform. Our games performing. Yep building the best platform for of creators, course of course we understand um, reaching that reaching as many players as we can we're always looking to learn as a leadership team um, and to grow and we think this is an interesting point in time for us to throw four cards what out the other platforms have right now um, to help <laughs> <grow our laughs> franchises. yep so sales wise so yes they do titles. what are yep. they, can they can what are they I'm not going to name those games oh the teams that are come games, on plans come on as we know, game teams put a lot of energy into their announcements with the partners. So um, I don't okay. want to take anything. Okay, away this from is those teams. Nintendo Direct um, so I announcement. That's why. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I think when they come out, um, it'll make sense. Can, Can we, we name them? If either of those titles are Starfield or Indiana Jones, they are not Starfield. Oh! Or Indiana Jones. Oh! oh! Shot in the heart, the bro. Thinking about selecting those four titles. Let me start a little bit outside of not, that and get to the four not Bethesda games. That not we're Bethesda. About right not now. Starfield. Not Indiana the, Jones. The fundamental decision driver for any decision that we make. Oh anything my we're God! About today okay. Is the long term health of Xbox that we're running a growing platform that is reaching more players, that our games are having as much success as possible. Yep. And I do have a fundamental belief that over the next five or 10 years, exclusive games, games that are exclusive to one piece of hardware are gonna be a smaller and smaller part of the game industry. Of and that's course, not of some course. great insight, because if you look at the last 10 years yep. and what the biggest yep, games yep, are yep, today, yeah, yeah, yep. it's a natural place. Whether PlayStation is moving to the PC. PC yep. Consoles, mobile console and PC. You see big games. The only person not on doing it is Nintendo, though. And we want to be a great platform for creators that are trying to realize that potential. Yep. But yep, now yep, back yep. to the specifics of the question on these four four specific titles. We looked at games that are I over a year old. So they've these. been on Xbox and PC for a while. Uh, a couple Halo, of the games are Master community driven games, new games that kind of first iterations of a it, franchise I that say have reached gears? their full potential. I'd say, or maybe Xbox Forza, and PC. maybe There's always growth. Franchises that we obviously want to continue to invest in. Parting part of having the ability to continue to invest is that the businesses behind those franchises continue to grow. Uh, yeah, we think it's important that these service based games that have service based them, games that they can service based games in the future. So two okay. Of them, Kind of community driven games that will end up on other two of them are the community to continue to invest in them so that's the at the ease and halo easy to, to, to easy to, to identify two of the other games are smaller games 
that Hi -fi. were never really meant to be built as kind of platform exclusives and all the fanfare that goes around that. But games that our teams really want. What's to the build, other one? That we love supporting creative endeavors across our studios. I'm, 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 I'm missing the other one. And as they've realized their full potential on Xbox and PC, we see an opportunity to Pendamin? utilize. Pendamin? Am platforms. I saying that wrong? As a place, I don't to know. Just show me what that is. Drive more business value out of those games, allowing us. To if that is a smaller game, that would make sense. Future that's iterations four. That's of the those, four. So sequels to those, or just other games like that in our portfolio. And when we don't damage Xbox and we can grow our business using what other platforms have and to, to help us with that. Let's grow it. That. Yep. And, makes and that's sense. really the story behind. These makes four sense. Games. Come on. Last thing I'll say, looking forward, you know, I, I think there are, there is an interesting story for us of introducing Xbox franchises to players on other console. Platforms yep. Yep. To get them more interested in Xbox. Yep. I think there's that, a, a good that does make brand sense. value for Xbox there. That does so make sense. Four games, no promise beyond that. So if you're on those other platforms and you see these four games coming, please don't take it as some signal that everything's coming. It's not. Um, <laughs> so we're okay. We're thinking about the future and this concept All of right. service games, games that can benefit from bigger audiences, new audiences. How does that apply to future titles and how you're applying that criteria there? Yeah, there's really no fundamental change. I think that was it. I think that was like the big issue. That was the big, was awesome the big show, question. Um, where we show from... games that are coming to Xbox and PC and cloud, which really makes them accessible to mm -hmm. you know hundreds of millions of people. So it's this kind of... You know, I think that was the big issue that we all had today. We all wanted to know what the hell was going on with um, Xbox and the... Uh, how does it apply to future titles? But I, I, I think that's what we wanted to know. Is there going to be exclusive? And excuse me for pausing it. I just want to... That's what I wanted to know. This is what I was here for. And he got it right off the back. How does it apply to future titles? I think we know. Xbox, Basically, it's going to be a case by case basis. publisher of great games. If, it, if they feel like it should be for the world's best creators. on other platforms, they're going to do that. If, that, it, if it's not, then it's not. party games and Game Pass? Yeah, well, to game build pass. on uh, what Phil just said, one thing first party games added, and Game Pass, growth, Activision yeah, Blizzard coming to Game Pass. Uh, we've sort of seen why this isn't the change over the last strategy? Five years how is multiplayer used to be the business? How to the biggest thing? If it's in the industry, the games, gaming communities, in Xbox hardware, within the platform, gaming today, big games like or the Roblox Xbox or today. Fortnite okay. could actually be bigger than any one platform. And, yep, uh, that really has changed the way that we think about things. So in the midst of all that. I think we at First Party can come back to sort of some core principles. First, that all of our games will be on the Xbox platform. Makes Second, sense. Second, all of our games will go into Game Pass on day one. Okay. And third, we know that Game Pass will only be available on Xbox. So there's sort of what about Activision though? What about um, Activision? As Phil games? mentioned, there are games today that you can play that only can be found on Xbox, yep. and at the same time. We want to bring more of our games to more players. So we're going to continue to look at that. Okay. Kind of moving aside, though, from some of those and thinking more about what does it really mean for the player, to me, the two key things are cross-play and cross-save. Yep. Yep. Um, those things those allow things are us good. to deliver on the promise of Xbox, which is play with your friends where yep, they yep, are, yep. play on the devices you want, play the games you yes, want. Yes, so yes, 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 yes. That is really only possible at a practical level when you know that your saves and your player are going to be able to move across all those parts. Um, so not all of our games today are necessarily built to take advantage of that. There still will be some games. Come on, man. Fortnite, um, Fortnite got that right like five years ago. Come on, man. The Xbox Figure that family. out. There's some Figure it out. to do as we get there. But that cross-play, cross-save is like so fundamental to what we're doing. And I think it's uh, something that we as first party get such a good benefit from being so close to the platform. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things, like you said, all of our games are always in Game Pass. And so I'm excited to announce, you know, with the coming together that we have okay. Activision Blizzard King, that Activision okay. Blizzard games are coming to Game Pass. Yes. Starting with Diablo 4 on oh! June 28th. Oh, what? what? To share today. Let's and go. It's part of our commitment. To Diablo 4, Xbox, Game Pass. Xbox That's big. And the games that we build is widely available as possible. So now the 34 million Game Pass members can all enjoy the fantastic experience of Diablo 4. Amazing. Can we come back to the point, Phil, you mentioned no, that the No, stay really on that. Stay on Game Pass. Can you recap for me how it isn't? Yeah, and I, I thought both Matt and Sarah did a really nice job of talking about what we're doing on Xbox, where, yep. where we're going. 
you know, if you if you take a platform feature like Xbox Play Anywhere, which yep. has been a promise that we've good made feature. in our first party games that you can buy a good game feature. Once, you I like it. Play across Xbox and Windows. There's a reason why I can play Xbox games because I can play it um, on my laptop. It I can play it on this not laptop. Only to play I can play it on my phone. Friends, wherever they are. But to know that you actually have multiple entitlements to the games, I think that's a, a technology I'd love to see applied to more platforms. Um, but it is this view that people are going to play Xbox in multiple places, um, mm -hmm. whether it's play the games you want. With the I didn't have time to set up. I didn't have time to set up. I am reading it. I am reading it. I am reading it. I have it here. I have it here. I have it here. I'm plays reading it. Win. Like we've had different taglines, different strategy. Uh, it's Why not am about I saying one so sad? It's not it's... about games in service of a device. This is good news, the bro. Devices that people want to play on should be in service of making the games as big and popular as they possibly could be. Because yeah. really, a healthy creator community on Xbox, a healthy creator community. This is the play you do when you add third place, bro. This, he, this is smart for them. For, because that's the thing that will lead to the best long term success and growth in this industry. And my understanding just from listening and learning from you three um, over the past few weeks, just understanding what's happening with Xbox is that we see trends with player behavior where people are playing on multiple devices. Mm -hmm. That is the reality. And we have put some games out on multiple uh, platforms before. So my understanding is that that's been good for players. How does that come back to the business with all of that in mind? Yeah, as you said, we have shipped games on other platforms. In fact, Real, realistically, if you look with the addition of Activision and Blizzard and Zenimax, we're <laughs> yeah, one of the got, largest yes. publishers on PlayStation. Yes. We're one of the largest publishers on yes. the Nintendo Switch, especially when you put Minecraft into the equation as well. And now we're one of the largest publishers um, on mobile platforms as well. We're king. And that's yep. not something that we want to back away from. We want to continue to be building great games that millions and millions of people can love. Uh, and that they can play those games where they want to go play. Um, but we do understand the business success that Xbox has to have. Um, us as leaders in this business, um, the system today, the system that all companies that we play video games from is a world of you got to be growing your business. Um, growth in our Xbox business is critical to the long-term health of Xbox. Many people know I've been on Xbox for over 20 years, and I want to make sure Xbox is in the best position for the next 20 years. That means healthy player community, healthy creator community, and healthy business. Yep. So when we look this at is how you do it. to allow more people to play, more people to engage, more people to Get buy, more people, more people to, people play. to subscribe, yep. Yep. it's all about putting Xbox in the best position. And our hardware is a critical component of that. The absolute best experience somebody has on Xbox is hardware that yep. your team builds mm -hmm. um, and that people play on. But that's not going to be everybody. We fully accepted that we're going to have Xbox players across all kinds of devices. Yep. So I think a lot of people think about I played, I played Halo Infinite year for gaming. And in a lot of ways it was. PC, there were some really phone, amazing releases that I think we all enjoyed. But I, what were the I, signals great. behind the scenes that maybe indicated how we wanted to look at the future of Xbox and how we kind of keep up with the industry?